What's up YouTube and welcome back to another one of my tutorials and today uh, we're going to get right to it. We will be deploying the ADFS environment and we're going to set up our tenant in Office 365. We will then install the Azure Active Directory component on our domain controller DC1 and we will connect that to our Office 365 tenant in the cloud. And then we will install Active Directory Certificate Services, uh, configure SSL encryption, and install the web services. Then we will install the Active Directory Federation Services features and set up device enrollment and registration for on-premises Active Directory and Azure Active Directory that will be based in the cloud. So it's really a complex scheme uh, when, you, when you really sit back and look at everything going on behind the scenes, but all in all, it's, it's really basic and straightforward. There's a uh, there's so much resources available uh, for, for setup and, and even testing. Uh, Microsoft is kind enough to uh, give us the option to set up a testing environment for this purpose, which is pretty awesome. So to give uh, to give a basic rundown, uh, you go to this. Let's say you want Microsoft Word or Outlook or uh, like. Excel, so you know you you have a business and you want to set that up. You want to be able to use spreadsheets, and you don't have it. Your subscription expired, so you go to the you go to Walmart and you buy a hundred like what ninety dollar card uh, for like a one year subscription. You scratch the back of it off, you enter in that product key, boom, good to go. So what this does is when you Sign up for the Office 365 E5 licensing series that will give you access to a multitude of applications that are hosted in the cloud through Microsoft Office 365. So when we set up this tenant and when everything is said and done, we will have Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and the basic desktop apps. We will also have Microsoft Teams, both the desktop app and the web app. We will have uh, access to the full Office 2016 suit that includes Access and Publisher. We will also, our email is gonna be, uh, obviously that's critical. We'll set that up first when all is said and done. We will be managing our Exchange server online. That's why it's called Exchange Server Online because we will be creating all those rules and configuring our our mail services and protocols in the Exchange Server Online. So we all we do all that through the browser, which is the handy feature of the cloud because you no longer have to maintain hardware and install the uh, the operating system and set up the exchange server and worry about system upgrades and patching you don't have to do that anymore uh, you're basically running computer hardware and you're accessing that through the browser now there is a monthly subscription fee to microsoft office 365 it is very expensive depending on what kind of business you're running if it's a local business and you really don't feel like spending a lot of money but you want to have the software at your disposal uh, this is the way to go you sign up for the office 365 e5 licensing and you can now this testing lab i'm doing has anywhere from 50 to 249 people uh actually this that's a rough estimate for this uh for the testing environment and so I'll, once i set that up and i integrate this with my on-premises domain controller whenever I make changes to a, uh, a user account 
like let's say they need the password changed so they can log in to the computer all right well that password will also need to be updated on their email on their SharePoint services on their teams and it will do it automatically once synchronization takes effect and we will go through and demonstrate synchronization because that is a critical component of Active Directory on-premises and Office 365. So the two have to communicate back and forth. So it's critical. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the component on the uh, domain controller. And is uh, is that a, why aren't we doing it on a uh, on another server? Didn't you say we we should build our uh, services and you know separate everything out? Yes, we should. In this case. With the limited hardware we have at our disposal, I will be installing the Azure AD Connect and Office 360 or the ADFS on DC1. That'll be okay for now for this testing purpose. That server is set to stay up as you know, it's that got the high availability uh, allocated to it. So unless there's an outage, a power outage, or a an ISP goes down, then we'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, so let's get right to it. We have a uh, sign up page. Now, this is uh, dummy data. Uh, let me see. So we have, I'm going to go to next. And I'm going to get a verification code. And I'm going to put that in. And here's the fun part. We have to make sure we pick the right uh, domain name. It's got to be a custom domain name. So if, it, if it's in use elsewhere, it's not going to work. So the name of our Domain control. Our domain name is actually going to be Contoso. It's Contoso.com. Can't use that for this because it's obviously going to be in use. So we will go with anything in general. And let's see if it's available. It is. Very cool. Uh, so that's actually right from the, I'm going to bring this back over here. It's directly from the PowerShell script, or I'm sorry, the CSV file. When we uh, set up our user accounts, we imported those from a CSV file to our domain controller using PowerShell and if we go to organization we will see Contoso Computing LLC so it, it works out pretty good then so we're gonna go to next and I'm gonna set up a uh, Sure the passwords stay the same. No, we don't need Microsoft to share our information.
Now I think that's finally set up, so I'm going to go to sign up. And uh, sure, we'll add it. This is critical information. You do not want to give this out to anyone because this will be the global administrative tenant for, or I'm sorry, this will be the global administrator for your tenant that we just set up. So now I'm going to copy this because uh, I want to make sure that that is stored away someplace where I'm not going to forget it. All right, so we're going to go to setup. And there it is. And here is what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to stop here. And we're going to pick up because uh, we got the easy part done. Now we have to go through and install the certificate services and apply SSL encryption for accessing Office 3. So it's got to be an encrypted, uh, it's got a communication going back and forth between your on-premises servers. So like your domain controller, your web server, your proxy, all that has to be encrypted. Uh, so the traffic going back and forth, uh, because you're going to the cloud, so you're basically accessing the internet. And you have to make sure you are applying encryption for that data that's transmitting back and forth. So we're going to stop here and pick up later.